Hey, what's up, guys? It is Dan from FlyWave, and today I'm joined by somebody who I know a lot of people wouldn't expect like me to do interviews with, but for me, it's very important to get a lot of different perspectives of this sport and really talk to anyone and everyone and really get the perspective of the journalists, you know, the fighters, the coaches, the nutritionists. I feel like it's really important to get every aspect of this sport and capture it in all of its essence and all of its glory. And today I'm joined by none other than Alex Behunin, who is a journalist for Kate Side Press. And he's often asking really great questions at the UFC post fight pressers. Really an underrated journalist, in my opinion. First and foremost, Alex, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for asking to um, have me on, man. Uh, I've been, we've been um, friends for, for a couple of years now, so I'm, I'm glad we finally get to talk, uh, talk, talk on camera. No, yeah, absolutely. And obviously, Alex. You know, when people talk about like the traditional journalist, you've obviously gone down the conventional path and you've paved quite a big path and you've really, you know, made a name for yourself amongst, you know, the, the MMA Twitter community and amongst the UFC fan base and MMA brass for, you know, your different outlook on covering this sport. I feel like uh, part of why I do what I do is in 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 essence, uh, out of inspiration for what guys like you do, you know, uh, getting a different perspective of the sport. You know, I rem I'm a really big fan of your Humanizing Athletes series, I think that, or Humanizing Fighters, I should say. And I think that what you do there and really bringing a different perspective and getting to know a little bit more about the fighter, uh, it really makes you stand out as a journalist. So talk to me, obviously, about, uh, first and foremost, any projects, how's life, and, you know, just uh, what kind of is your ambitions with the journalism because i think with you we really do get a fresh perspective for those guys that have kind of gone the grassroots route and paved the way for other people to do this yeah so there was a lot there man uh thank you for thank you for the kind words man um yeah um the funny thing about the humanizing athletes man was um i just i started that because i I, I'm always curious on like what somebody's favorite movie is, right? Like that's that, that's that's kind of like I love movies and, and MMA. Like that's those are like my two things. And so like whenever I meet somebody, I want I I always want to talk movies with them. So I kind of just was like at first I just wanted to be like what if, what what is a fire's favorite movie? And then from there it kind of was just like I just kind of just started going like well let's just find out more about them because to me <clears throat> um, when I was coming up I was told I mean even through journalism school, like at first I, my original goal is I wanted to do movies and television, like be media in there. And then I quickly found out that Hollywood is just full of weirdos and um, they're just not the people that just don't relate with. And so, um, so when I went, so when I changed gears and went with MMA, man, it was, um, I, I, I look at the sport differently and, um, I personally want to know about the fighter themselves. Like, I don't give a shit about their training camp. I don't care about what they're doing in the, in the next fight. Like, there's people that have covered the sport for 20, 20, 30 years that have the analyst side of it down. Like, down. And, and like, I'm not an analyst. I'm not a fight analyst. I'm not a fighter analyst. Like, I want to know personally. Like, I'm, I'm a storyteller, first and foremost. And so, what I like to do is i like to find out more stuff so about the fighter and funny enough like fighters like to talk about themselves and so like that's just kind of like where i where i kind of go with like my little my i guess my corner of the of, of the market right like i like to find like i like to ask like the, the like the different like i like to find out about their nicknames i like to find about like what what what's the story about their tattoos you know what i'm saying like like personal personal stuff um and and even like even when it like dripped down into my interviews like i like to know like their emotions behind a win emotion behind a loss like you know what i'm saying like stuff like that so that's just that's kind of how like where my mind is when i when it comes to stuff like that no oh, yeah absolutely and i love what you mentioned is like what's my side of the market kind of what i bring to the table and i feel like that's something that's different with any mma you know, media guy or any journalist that covers this sport is you're bound to get something different with everyone. You know, with you, we get often the more personalized questions. You know, what do we we get to know a little bit more about the fighter? And obviously through that, we've gotten some remarkably, you know, funny and wholesome moments. You know, there was a thing that went around, Alex, with the Shafka Rachmanov, you know, horse meat comment. You know, that was 
Dude, that was funny, and I, I think that was the story of the weekend, just like a, the meme of the week, and the fact that, you know, you flushed that out, you know, you, if it wasn't for your question, we wouldn't have gotten that, that funny piece of intel that Shafkat is, you know, an Alistair Overeem type of enthusiast when it comes to eating his horse, but, you know, it's, it's things like that, and I feel like right now with the media in, in combat sports, it's, a, it's in a very unique position and bubble, comparatively speaking to other sports, because... I think in terms of be giving opportunity, this sport has the most opportunity within it where somebody can literally just get up and start covering the sport and within a couple of years literally become one of the faces of the MMA media and journalistic and journalists, you know. Uh, we've seen the remarkable journey that OG Shawnee Mack has had, you know, going from covering the sport and being a meme page and just thing to being one of the more, you know, talked about journalists in the sport as of recently, you know, stuff like that. And we've seen guys like yourself pave a way through that conventional route and really show and make and force a presence with the fighters. You know, for me, when I think about what you've done, you know, and a moment that comes to mind is the Khalil Roundtree, you know, he confided in you specifically and it's because of the relationship that you develop with that with him as a fighter so talk to me about obviously you know some of the relationships that you fostered with these fighters and what is it meant to, for you to have such a you know a strong understanding of the fighters and getting to know them and showing your into them that they feel comfortable enough to confide in you even about some of the most darkest things some of the most personal home hitting stuff what does that mean to you as a person it means a lot, man. It, it really does. And getting the trust of these guys is very important, man. And it, um, because most, you know, media gets a bad rap a lot of the time because they're just trying to get the next quote or they're trying to get something for like a, for a, for a headline. Right. And like, I understand that aspect, like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I write for MMA mania. Right. So, and, and we're, we're one of the biggest outlets, in in mma so like i get i get getting the big headline but like for me like i'd rather not get the headline and like be get to know them and get trust get trust like so there's a there is definitely a wall up no matter no matter like when you go into i guess it's just like with it just people in life but like especially with with the professional fighters there's this wall up. They're like, what do you want from me? Like, what do you need? You know what I'm saying? And like, once you get past that wall, then like real relationships kind of start to start to go. Like one, one easy thing you can do is like check up on a fighter, right? Like check up how they're doing, not, not trying to get any news from them, not trying to get anything from them. Or like the, another big thing that I, I do, like just because like some of them, like I, I even call them my friends. Like, I check up on them like, after they lose. A lot of people don't give a fuck what happens when, when they lose, right? Like that's 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 the disconnect from like fans and everything. Like we watch these guys on television, but as soon as their fight's over, we forget about them the next time until we forget about them until they fight again, right? And like it's MMA is such a it's the sport is so emotional and it's fucking crazy, right? Like foot like it's it's just so when somebody loses a fight, like there's no one to blame other than yourself, right? With football, basketball, you know, it's like there's a team. You can blame a team. You can blame whatever. When you're fighting in a cage, it's all you. It's all it's all you. There's no no one else that fucked up except for you, right? So it's a it's a really big thing. And so that's 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 one of the things. When, when I, I simply it's not it's not hard. It takes thirty seconds. Just check up on a fighter, man. And that's kind of how I. I've kind of fostered a, a, a little bit of relationship because I try and like, I, you know, I see them obviously like I, I have a professional relationship with these guys, but I also see them as like, as like, I see them as a fighter, but I also see them as a person like that. that, that that's my biggest thing. Like when I strip down the fighter, I see them as a person, you know what I'm saying? And, and I like to check up on my friends. I like to check up on people like that's just, just being kind. Right. No, yeah, absolutely. And I love what you mentioned there is checking up on them. You know, a lot of people often, you, you know, they don't even like hit up fighters. They, like you said, it's such a in the moment sport that we often forget about fighters through wins and through losses. You know, some people just completely go over our heads. But, you know, maintaining those relationships and looking at it like like you said, treating them like humans. I always say fighters are humans first and, you know, uh, fighter they're human beings first and fighters second. You know, then like I say, they're, they're not robots. They're human beings. You've got to treat them like human beings. 
they're not just guys who go in there and fight for your entertainment. They're just not, you know, glad. Like I know that obviously there's a term glad. They're gladiators, but in hindsight, they really aren't. You know, like they're not. They're not guys that just go in there and fight for your entertainment. They're human beings. They're fathers. They're husbands. They're they're wives. You know, they're 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 so much more than what meets the eye. And and just looking at them as like these robots that fight, I feel like that's often kind of the unfortunate reality of our sport. And I feel like even in the media, you know, like you said, like ever, uh, some people often, you know, obviously, of course, they have to ask their questions, they have to get their headlines, and that has that's its place. But I feel like what I love is having also that variety of that of that more personal, personable, like you know, relatable aspect brought into it. Because at the end of the day, I feel like with journalists, they're trying to create some com- a compelling, you know, work of art. You're you're trying to put some compelling word work out there first and foremost, and not just you know something that. Oh, it's gonna get clicks, but it's gonna be forgotten about. You want people thinking about what you're putting out for days on end, and I feel like we really get that with what you put out there because you're putting a little bit of yourself out there. You know, like you said, it's very easy sometimes to relate to fighters' struggles because it's such a personal sport. A lot of fighters get into it for different reasons. Some people grew up doing martial arts. Some people look at it as an escape. But for us, you know, as fans or as you know, media or as you know, guys who are in the sport covering it or watching it. We relate to these fighters on another level, you know, whether it's through our own personal adversities or endeavors, and we bring a little piece of ourselves into these interviews, you know, me and you included, you know, whether it was getting bullied, whether it was, you know, having adversities or struggles or, you know, just any sort of adversity, we bring that, you know, personable aspect into the into the interviews, and we always try to incorporate that. So I guess, like, I want, I say for myself, you know, looking at you, it's like first time proof and inspiration of, you know, perseverance, meeting opportunity, and you really bringing that into every interview that you do. What has it meant for you to have this this outlet and have this opportunity to be able to to bring some of your own, you know, I guess like how do I say it? like. The best way to put it is how does it feel for you to be able to bring some of your your lessons, your learnings into your interviews and be able to bring the best out of the fighters through your personal experiences? Yeah, it's, it's hard, man. Um, you know, I struggle. I mean, I, I'm a recovering drug addict and then I and then I also I struggle with depression. Right. So like that is something that like. I don't know. It's 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 hard because like obviously not every fighter is a recovering drug addict. Not every fighter deals with depression. But like when you break it down to like like you said, like when you break it down to like the bare minimum, like it's a human on human basis, right? And like that's what what like that's what I try to do is to break them down into a human being. Like that's like that's just like the main my main focus on a thing right and so like i've dealt with loss i dealt with whatever and like that's what that's like the first getting 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 fires to relate to that or you're even getting your audience to relate to that like that's that's like tying tying the relatability to it because like you said bro like fires are a it's not everyone's gonna fight in a cage you know what i'm saying so like it's very very hard for people to relate to it and everyone thinks that they're a they're a couch uh, like a, uh what, what is it like a armchair couch kind of quarterback right where they they think they know everything but like they don't man and 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 um like going going i, I like to go watch sparring Tuesdays and thursdays at extreme couture and um being in there um and seeing what these guys go through um it's very very eye-opening and there's a big 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 disconnect from fans to fighters like well bringing it right back to what we said over like people watch them on television they watch them fight and then that's it they, they win lose they that's it Right. And then or and then they forget about him until something happens on social media or the fight announcement or they fight again. But like they don't get to see what 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 happened going going into the fight. Right. Or if the winner lost after the fight. Right. Like I, I'm in the gym after the fight and before the fight and I see what they fucking go through. It is it is a tough, 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 tough sport, man. And people don't like. Yeah. they they people think that oh yeah it, it obviously it's a tough sport because of the fighting aspect of it and then the weight cut but like there's just so much more of it and fires have told me numerous times it's 
fighting is 5% fighting and 95% mental. Like if you're not mentally in, 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 you know, you, you're, someone's going to fight tomorrow. Right. And if you're not into it, like you're just not into it and you're going to, you're going to lose. Right. Like it's, you, you have to be 100% focused on the shit because you have another guy coming at you. So it's just, there's so much more to it. And I, and I try, I, I try and get that through, to people like through my through my interviews or through my little tidbits like that's what I try and that's why I, I try and build this bridge build this bridge for, for 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 people to understand because there's this bridge that's like fucking broken between the fires and fans you know like it, it's crazy no yeah absolutely and like you said it's about you know connecting that bridge together and trying to create that environment and I feel like through the new age, I guess like what people are donning the new age of media, a new age of mixed martial arts media, we're able to bring a little bit more of that out. You know, the definition of what it is to be, a, you know, someone covering a sport or being a journalist, comparing it even to 10 years ago, five years ago, has changed so much drastically through the age of social media. And, you know, we're getting people from all different walks of life coming into the sport and covering it. It's not just this professionalism, professionalism first, you know, uh, relatability second, culture anymore. I feel like we're really bringing quality conversation and really bringing that human condition really back into journalism and what, what it means to become a journalist. So I want to ask you, you know, just to wrap things up. And Alex, I thank you so much first and foremost for being open with us. You know, a lot of this dialogue I love to have is about being open and really getting different perspective, you know, because oftentimes I feel like, you know, whether it's being persecuted by, you know, higher ups and, or, you know, being persecuted by people who have a bad impression of the media, you know, it's, it's up to guys like us or, and guys like yourself, you know, who are at the forefront, at the helm, you know, and really changing that culture and that's, and that stigma behind fighters getting in, a, in an interview with us. And, you know, they, I feel like first and foremost, that skepticism comes from years and years of, of mistrust and, you know, mis, mismanagement, mislabeling and, you know, bad circumstances that surround doing media. And it's up to guys like yourself and me to, you know, really change that stigma. So I guess just to wrap things up, what are your honest thoughts on this new wave? You know, guys like Ben DeBain Davis, guys like McMally MMA, guys like McGregor Rousey, you know, myself, you know, Full Violence, Brawler Bible, you know, all these different pages and, you know, new new age outlets and brands and, and personalities that are coming up in this sport and yourself included, you know, uh, a lot of you know like the guys and i i hate to bring up you know the age but i feel like in that in that mid 30s to now to like younger it's it's such a different thing comparatively speaking to to journalists in their 40s 50s 60s guys that grow grew up covering sports like the like basketball soccer uh, football you know for us coming up in, in like this new wave from like i want to say like 40 and younger it's such a different perspective, such a different environment. So what are your thoughts on like the new age of, of mixed martial arts coverage? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it, it's, it's interesting. Um, like, I don't know, jur- the being called a journalist is a, it's a very loose, loose term because, um, like I have a journal I have a journalism degree. I went to school for journalism. Like it's right up on the wall right there. Um, but like I, I don't even like really consider myself a journalist journalist right like i'm I, i'm a reporter that does journalistic things right um and so when when like so when so yeah so there's that and then i don't know the, the this new age of, of there's no there's no denying that like social media is the future and um social social media is such a it's such a very it's a, such a important and powerful tool in 2023 um but like you know on to to like i I don't think a a lot of these instagram pages are media they're not like they they're you you can consider yourself an outlet or you can consider yourself a like a fan page or something but like you're not media right and so um so like and, and and there's just and it's so easy to get a bunch of followers by posting pictures and posting everything and then and then having you know say you have thirty thousand followers and then you start breaking news and then automatically you're 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 labeled media because you broke one fight or you you know it's like there's there is definitely a like a barrier there but 
I mean, in in general, I I think that the new media is it, it is positive, man. It is positive, and social media is is a powerful thing. And MMA MMA itself is just um, it's so easy to get hold of, to to get a hold of these fighters, right? So that's that's what makes it so um, that that that's what makes it so it like muddies the water, right? Like if you you don't see it in 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 in, in the NFL, be, right? Because the the NFL players are behind agents and the NFL and teams and agents and PR and everything, like so like you don't see a lot of NFL Instagram pages that like think that they're media or like the, the like this new thing. Like there's like Adam Rat Rappaport, right? And then there's like a few other ones you can name them. There's like four, four or five, right? But like because of, because MMA fighters are so easy to get a hold of, and it's it's still a wild wild west. Like really, it really really is. Like the sport's barely turning thirty years old this this in, in a couple in a couple months really, and so like there's no book that really explains like what it is to be a journalist, what it is to be a media, uh, how to conduct, how to do this right like. That's why there's so many people you see, like, you know, like a Bellator or a PFL, you see so many quote unquote journalists like go over there, but they, but they make a fool out of themselves because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They, they, they get, they get credentialed and they're taking pictures with the fighters or, or they're cheering for a fighter. Like, so like it gives, it, that's why it's so hard to get credentialed by the UFC because like the UFC don't play that shit. Like you have to be with a very, with a with an outlet that that's approved right like i don't know I, i'm i'm, I'm kind of rambling but the, the the long short answer is i think the new media is very it's 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 it, it is refreshing it, it is it is refreshing but like i i don't even think mac mac Malley would, would call himself media like he's not he, he's a he's a he's media when it comes to like karate combat but like he's just a big ufc fan like ben He's media, but like he's a play-by-play announcer. You know what I'm saying? So like it's like it's like different lanes. You know what I'm saying? Like super fan, um, he's not media. He's a super fan. You know. So but like but they have but they have a big audience that they have a lot. So they have a they have a big voice, which is very and it's and it's refreshing. No, yeah, definitely. I love what you mentioned. It's like a powerful tool towards improving the sport. But obviously, like you said, like even myself, I consider myself a fan first, you know, I don't like to, I feel like for me, especially as a student right now, going to school, like it's like if somebody goes to, you know, like decides to be kind of like a science whiz in their like, you know, in their like garage or something. And then all of a sudden they want to call themselves an engineer, you know, like it's, it's like that it's, it's, it's about paying respect to the, about paying respect to kind of like the merits behind what it is to become a journalist. And I feel like that, like you said, it's it's become a little lost, you know, and even me doing all of these interviews and stuff like for me, it's more about for me, I do it for me, like to get the perspective, you know, like, I feel like it's, it's, it's a very powerful tool towards improving yourself as a person and just giving other people, you know, content, like I call myself a content creator, you know, like I like, I like creating content, like I feel like that's a more appropriate term, but I think for like you said, for more for what it's worth for more or less this new age of social media has really improved what it's like to get coverage on the sport. It's really brought the sport to a whole new light. But like you said, with the UFC, it's very difficult. Like even ourselves, you know, not a not a big publication by any means. We don't have a site, you know, we just have the Instagram and the YouTube. But like if, even for us, you know, to want to go and cover the sport, it's extremely difficult because for us, we don't even see ourselves as like a media publication. We see ourselves as a content creation brand and, a, you know, a media, not, a media, not in the sense of, of journalism and covering the sport, but more or less like just wanting to, to, you know, create quality content surrounding the sport. And I think that's what it comes down to is not staying in that gray area of what it means to be a journalist, because being a journalist, I feel like it nowadays has lost its sense. And like, like with a lot of other things, it's, it's like it's a very loose ter- loose term and i feel like that's the sad reality behind it but i feel like with guys like yourself guys like john morgan guys like or and the women like amy kaplan who are amazing photographers like you bring merit back to and you bring the power back and structure back to what it is to be a journalist but like you said for for all that it's worth it's done big things for the sport 
I just wish a little bit more of that, you know, like a little bit more of that respect and homage to what it really means was applied towards it. But, you know, like you said, at the end of the day, better, better to have these people in the sport than to have no coverage at all. And, you know, just have nothing really going for the sport in terms of coverage. But, you know, it's, it's conversations like this that are able to open that door a little bit and create a little bit more perspective. So I thank you so much, Alex, for your time. It's been an honor to speak with you and finally get this, you know, this conversation done. You know, it's been a year or two in the making, just busy schedules, but I truly do appreciate you and just getting that perspective from you. And, and, you know, I can apply this towards my interviews or something like that. It's all about the perspective for me at the end of the day. And I mean, to the fans at home watching, do be sure to check out Alex Bayunin on, so, on social media and just check him out on Instagram. Obviously with the Humanizing Fighters series, it's a really great series. I, I highly recommend you guys check it out when it does drop. And, you know, uh, if you guys enjoyed this interview, do be sure to like, comment, subscribe. It's been me, Dan, from Fight Wave, guys, signing out.